Now we're in 1 Corinthians 15 and we're still in the first half of the chapter which is 1 to 34. We're dealing with the fact of resurrection and when you get to verse 35 to the end of the chapter you will start to look at the form that resurrection takes. What's the shape of it? What does it look like? This is the fact. It's actually quite interesting to notice that Sir Winston Churchill asked for 1 Corinthians 15 to be read at his funeral. I don't know if he was a believer or not, but he must have believed that there was a resurrection. Verse 20 is a key verse in the whole of this chapter. I'm going to read verses 20 to 22 today and then we'll have a look broadly about what this section is about and then deal with those two verses. Verse 20 of 1 Corinthians 15. But now... Is Christ risen from the dead? Become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. This broad section, I think I uh, introduced you to it at the end of my last recording, 20 to 34, is the establishment, justification and effect of the truth of resurrection. So we're going to see in this section established for us, first of all in this little section we've read 20 to 22, the certainty of resurrection for the believer. Then when we get to 23 to 28 we're going to see the program of God based upon the fact of resurrection. And then when we get to the final subsection 29 to 34 Paul proceeds to point out the folly of continuing the Christian life if there is no life after death. There are major consequences to denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ and misunderstanding what the scripture teaches on this subject. So there are positive consequences to be understood through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 20 I said to you is a key verse but now is Christ risen from the dead. Now that's the now of argument, if I could put it that way. Paul was writing a considerable period of time after the Lord Jesus had been raised from the dead. But in the course of his argument he's saying, but now is Christ risen from the dead? So he's saying, let me establish the fact. In the first part of the chapter he's established eyewitness evidence. He's taken us to biblical, scriptural evidence. And then he's come to the consequences of denying the evidence. So he's kind of built all of that together and now he's saying but now is Christ risen. This fact of history, this fulfilment of scripture, this event that was seen by eyewitnesses and this event that is it is illogical not to believe it in light of the rest of scripture. Now is Christ risen from the dead. We can praise God for that. The Lord Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. What a saviour. He is risen. But notice what it says. And he's become the first fruits of them that slept. I didn't deal with it much last time because we were dealing with some of the negative consequences of denying the resurrection. But this little expression jumps up time and time again. Fallen asleep in Christ. Fallen asleep in Jesus. Slept as we have in our verse. When you go to sleep, you expect to wake up in the morning. That would be the norm. Sadly, some people die in their sleep, but that's not normal. Normally, you go to sleep, switch off from this world for a while, and you go into slumber, and then you wake up in the morning. Sleep is a temporary thing. And so the Bible is describing here that the believer's body experiences the temporary sleep of death. It's not permanent. You're not going to be dead forever. Death is a, in a physical sense, is a a temporary thing. Now, sadly for the unbeliever, we, we discover the Bible talks about the second death. Now, that's a permanent thing. Not of their body, of course, because they'll get a resurrected body that will be created to be, be fitted for occupying a place of judgment, the lake of fire, which is a terrible thing. But it's an eternal death, the second death. Well, this is temporary for the Christian. So the word slept, asleep, etc., because the Lord Jesus is going to come. First Thessalonians chapter 4 teaches them that sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Uh, he's going to come and he's going to return again. It, the Lord Jesus is going to come and bring with him those that sleep in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful thing. And the, over recent days we've heard of a number of believers being called home. What a prospect to know that those that sleep in Jesus he will bring with them at the resurrection 
and at his coming again. The first fruits really is the idea that he came first. You need to go uh, a little later into th these verses beyond the ones we're going to look at today and we'll see this idea of a progression of stages of the fact that Christ is first and then there are others that follow. So Christ has become the first fruits of them that slept. We'll get that order described for us in verse 23. So he's the first fruits. That means, you see, when the farmer went to the field in Jewish times, when he harvested at the beginning of the harvest, he took that first sheaf, he presented it to God. It was evidence the harvest was, was ready to be reaped. The harvest was coming. There was more to follow. The Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection is the evidence that there's more to follow. He's the first fruits of them that slept. Now in verse 21, we find that man was the agent through whom death came. For since by man came death. By one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So man was the agent through whom death came. Since by man came death. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. And we're going to see running through this chapter this comparison and contrast between Christ and Adam. So Adam brought death. But Christ brought the resurrection. By man came death, Adam. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. But then we have some general statements in verse 22. As in Adam all die. So we know that from Romans 5 verse 12 which I've quoted to you already. By one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. We all die physically, we're all dead in sin spiritually, we're all separated from God. Why? Because of Adam. In Adam all die. So we're all being brought into a state of death and enter into death and if we don't get our sins forgiven and get eternal life, we'll be eternally in the second death separated from God. In Adam all die. Even so, the verse says, in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, that's a qualified statement. In Christ. How did you get into Adam? You were born into a human family. You were born into the human race. How did you get into Christ? You repent of your sin and you're born into the family of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. To as many as received him, he gives the authority, the power to be called the children of God. They're born into the family of God, at conversion, even to them that believe in his name. Those that belong to Christ are described in this term, in Christ. We'll see this fleshed out a little more again in verse 23. Those that are Christ's. But 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. So salvation brings a new beginning. It puts you in Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 talks about the dead in Christ. Romans 8 verse 1 talks about there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So this expression, and it's already been used earlier in verses 18, those that are fallen asleep in Christ, verses 19, in this life only we have hope in Christ. And so these verses are establishing for us the fact that a believer is described as being not now in in Adam, but in Christ, by new birth. What does it say? As in Adam all die, all those who are in Christ, through repentance and faith in Christ, shall be made alive at the resurrection. And so we're brought into this great position where there's the certainty of resurrection for the believer. Now we're going to look into this in a bit more detail in the next recording and see this programme developed, the programme of God based on the resurrection. Thanks for your company. Really appreciate it.